Welcome to the Ben Wood Johnson Podcast. You can visit Dr. Johnson's blog at benwoodpost.com. Dr. Johnson's works can be found at drbenwoodjohnson.com. You can also support Dr. Johnson on Patreon, the link to which is in the description. Hey, hey, welcome everybody. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the Ben with Johnson podcast. Uh, today is March 22nd, 2021. This is podcast number 65. Uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to have you back uh, for another episode uh, of the Ben Wood Johnson podcast. Uh, Dr. Johnson's here. Um, well, today we're going to continue our conversation about legal obligation. Uh, yes, yes, yes. It, it's been a, it's been a, a bore so far. You know, I hope you don't feel that way. But uh, you know, anyway, next week is going to be our last installment in the series of podcasts, and that will wrap up our season, uh, season eight. Um, you know, which was dedicated to the concept of legal obligation. We will come back. Uh, I don't have a date yet, but we will come back sometimes in the summer uh, to have some conversations about another issue. This time, I think we're going to talk about crime in the philosophy. In the meantime, today, our conversation is going to linger on the concept of artificial obligation or artificial duties. And these are duties that are man-made, uh, the foundation of legal obligation itself. Uh, because if it is not natural, it is artificial. So that is what we're going to talk about today. So without further ado, let us delve right into it. As we have discussed in previous podcasts, uh, a legal obligation is a compulsion. You have an obligation to obey a law. And the concept of obligation implies a duty, a need to be, or a need to do. It also implies a need not to be, or an obligation not to do. Okay? In other words, it's an obligation either to do or to omit from doing. At the same time, it is an obligation either to be or to omit from being. And this is the foundation of every society where the individual is expected to either be a certain way or the individual is expected to omit from being a certain way. And as we will discuss in subsequent podcasts, it's this understanding that society expects you to be a certain way. And when you're not that way, it is assumed that you made a choice not to be that way. This is the foundation of a criminal justice system. This is the foundation of law and order to the extent that when you do not behave, you have to be punished for your disobedience, so to speak. Okay? So it is the foundation of the notion that you, as an individual, you have the last word. You make the last call. You, thereby, are responsible for everything that you do or everything that you omit from doing. So when we're talking about obligation within that context, you have to see the, the, the flaw in the logic here. And we've talked about freedom, we've talked about um, the notion of, of individualism, collectivism, and all that. But today, let us go back to the concept of obligation. When we're talking about an obligation, we have to consider two aspects of the concept. The first aspect of an obligation is what I call a natural obligation. The second is what I also call an artificial obligation obligation. In other words, natural duties, artificial duties. And those duties are either natural in the person or they are artificial. If the duty is natural, that means the person has no say in the duty itself. The person has to do whatever it is that 
he or she is naturally obligated or obliged to do. If the person could not do something naturally, then the person could never do that naturally. So those obligations, whether to do or to omit from doing, whether to be or to omit from being, are natural to the extent that the person has absolutely no say in them. And let us take the example of a natural function in the human body. For example, you have to eat. Eating is a natural obligation. It's a natural duty. It is not up to the individual to eat. It is not up to the individual to eat whenever he or she feels like it. There is a natural, in this case, it is a biological obligation. There's a biological clock in the person which requires the individual to eat. There are certain things that you could not eat. And thereby, it is not that the person could not try to eat it, but it is naturally impossible to do so. Those things are unedible. Or you could say that they're poison for the body, for the human body. Okay? So naturally speaking, this entity has absolutely no say as to when to eat, how to eat, and to the extent that he or she eats. Because it is a natural duty to do so. We could use another example. Let's call. Let's talk about a biological function such as, um, you know, passing gas, going to the bathroom, you know, having to pee or number one, or however you want to call it. Those are natural obligations which the individual at no point in time could decide not to do. Of course, the individual could postpone that obligation to the extent that he or she may say, I'm not going to the bathroom now, but at some point he or she is going to have to go to the bathroom. The person could not permanently defer his or her obligation to go to the bathroom or to function a certain biological um, you know, attribute at a certain point in time. So when we're talking about a natural obligation, that is what we're talking about. The obligations that are natural, that are intrinsic, that are innate in the person. Uh, we could look at another obligation. The obligation to uh, enter in a sexual relationship with, with another person, okay? Those obligations are natural, okay? To the extent that the person could not forego them. And of course, we're not going to debate uh, the concept of which, uh, you know, partner, how things are supposed to be. We could come back to this in a different conversation when we're talking about nature itself and the way nature operates. Uh, but everything that is doable is also natural in and of itself. Uh, so the idea that you shouldn't be this way because it is perhaps some Bible, the Bible says you shouldn't, or God says you shouldn't, all this nonsense, those are part of the, 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 the flaws of society, the, the, the fallacies that we as, as entities have, have grown accustomed to believe, uh, which are not necessarily the case. So when we're talking about nature, anything that is doable, anything that is possible, it is natural. And it, the same thing applies for sex, okay? It is not unnatural to do something that is doable in nature. If it is unnatural, it won't be possible, okay? And we're not going to go into this religious understanding as to what life is about and how life should be. But as intellectuals, just to put a caveat here, uh, but, you know, as intellectuals, you have to be able to think beyond the nonsense, okay? You have to be able to do that. And if you're listening to this podcast at this hour, you are willing to do so. Because here you will learn to think beyond the nonsense. Because there's, there's, there's plenty of it out there. And you have to be able to think. Be critical. Be a critical thinker. Okay? Be, be, be able to see things for what they are. Not what others are telling you that they are. Be able to see things for yourself. Okay? Don't be buying into nonsensical ideas. Keep in mind that when we're talking about the being, the entity who is considered a human being is only to the extent that nature allows it. And anything that is doable, it is therefore natural. 
and to the extent that it is natural it is not up to the being to either be that way and do that way or to omit the self from being that way or to omit the self from doing that way anyone who's telling you differently is, is probably misleading you as to what the world is about but to go back I digress a little bit but to go back to the concept of obligation what you need to keep in mind is that when we're talking about obligation we're talking about natural obligation intrinsic obligation things that you cannot wake up one morning and say I'm not gonna do okay things that you cannot wake up one morning and say I'm not that I'm not gonna be this way on him anymore I'm not going to be that way anymore whoever you are however you are this is your nature this is how you were born and you should be able to be that way regardless of where you are regardless of understandings about who you should be Okay, so when we're talking about natural obligation, that is precisely what we're talking about. Natural tendencies in the person that are intrinsic, that are innate, that are inborn. In other words, you were born that way. That's who you are. Okay, you should not, at least you should not, you should not be obligated to be differently. These are natural obligations. On the other side of the coin, there is what I call artificial obligations or artificial duties. An artificial obligation, as the name implies, is an obligation that is unnatural. And because it is unnatural, therefore it is artificial. Okay? It is man-made. It is an obligation that derived from a person's understanding, from another living being's understanding of what your nature is. And to go back to the concept of your, your way of being in this world, there are plenty of it to go around. And again, these are nonsensical ideas about who you should be, okay? If it is not natural, then it is artificial. And if it is artificial, it is based on somebody's understanding of who you are or who they are. Because sometimes people don't know who they are. They misread themselves. And because of that misreading of themselves, they think they know who they are. And therefore, they also think they know who you are. They don't even know who they are, really, but they think they do. And to that extent, they think they know you. And they're going to create laws, rules, designed to tame you to the extent that they think they know themselves. So these are artificial obligations, whereby the individual is forced to be a certain way. The individual is expected to be a certain way, and that is why. No matter how you look at the concept of a legal obligation, it is unnatural, okay? Whenever we're talking about the legal obligation, we're talking about an unnatural obligation that society imposes on the being. That is why, to go back to the previous concept of social contract, the assumption is that you somehow agreed to be this way or that way. In other words, you agreed for them to want you to be this way or that way. It is a complete nonsense. As a thinker, as a philosopher, you have to be able to see the world for what it is. Because I, I, I want to share my understanding of this world with you. But the concept of artificial duty implies the understanding that the duty itself is not natural, rather. In other words, you were not born this way. There's no natural uh, inherence in, 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 in being this way or that way or not being this way or not being that way. So, a natural obligation requires an important element. It requires, as the word implies, consent. Because you have to agree. You have to consent to be that way. And that is why one of the fundamental aspects of, of, of legal obligation or, or society as, as a whole is the notion of consent. Now, the consent itself is not based on you. It is not assumed that you, at some point, are going to give consent. It is assumed that you've already given consent simply for the fact of being in society. And that's where the fallacy of society is sort of obvious for anyone who can see to see. But one of the key elements of an unnatural obligation is consent. You have to become aware of that obligation at some point. And once you are aware of that obligation, that is the only way you are going to make yourself obey. You're going to make yourself fulfill that obligation. That is why the whole concept of obligation is based on the fallacy of a social contract, whereby the understanding is that you are part of society because you have somehow agreed to be in it. Somehow you agreed to be forced to be this way or not to be that way. Because it, it, it's important. It's the most important element of society. Of course, sometimes when you say, no, I didn't consent, and society itself is going to use force, you know? How, how many times do people say, I don't want this? And who, whoever's in charge of society decides to use force. 
again, I don't want to be politically correct. What's happening in Myanmar right now? What is happening in Myanmar? Okay, a bunch of people decided to take over this, the society itself. And the people say, no, we don't want that. And guess what? They say, no, it's going to be our way. The same thing happened in, in, in Egypt. It happened in, in, in Libya. It's happening in, 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 in many parts of the world. It's happening in Haiti at this very moment. Where the people say, we don't want this. And some, you know, decided, no, we're going to make sure you are the way we say it. The Haitian people have decided, no, we don't agree with this. We don't want that. We don't want this regime. We don't want this government. We don't want this way of life. But they say, no, this is the way of life you're going to have. Because you have to understand how the foundation of this, this fallacy works. It is based on the presumption that you consented. Okay. And when you say, no, I didn't consent to that. They're going to do it anyway. Because the consent was not really important in the actuality. You know, theoretically, yes, you needed to consent. But in the actuality, you needed not to consent. And you did not consent indeed. But it doesn't really matter. What matters is what they say. The artificial duty, they are going to impose it on you. Remember the COVID-19. How much of it you agreed? How much of the, the whole lockdown and all that you agreed? No, none of it. Of course, there are some people who didn't know better, who sort of agreed for this. Of course, some of them did it for political reason. And most people did it for sheer ignorance. Okay? A decision that should have been individual became a collective decision for political expediency. The idea that you somehow consented for things to happen in society, that's not the case at all. During the COVID-19, it was evident that your consent, although they say it's important for your existence or at least for the way society works, at that moment, it was obvious that it had nothing to do with it. Some guys, some people decided that's what we think you should do. That is how we think you should be. And therefore, you absolutely had no say on it. So the point is this. Artificial duties are duties that are made out, tailored specifically for you to be a certain way. Whether or not you agreed has absolutely no relevance at the end of the day. Okay? They're going to make you be that way. They're going to make you do this thing because it's regardless of you. But in order to have an artificial duty, the person has to be on notice. The person has to become aware of what's obligated, what's expected, and how he or she is supposed to behave. Okay, so the person learns to be that way. Sometimes it is a, a long process. It is a process that starts with the child. You know, it starts at home with mom and dad, the school, the society, the institutions within society that are designed to make you be this way or that way. And when you are not, you become a, a sociopath, as they call it. You become a problem. You become an outlier, not in a good way. You become someone they have to sort of get rid of, you know? That is the way it works. Again, I am not making this up. I'm just telling you what I see. That's the way I understand society, okay? But sometimes that way of being has a detriment, has some negative consequences on the person, okay? And I've alluded in previous podcasts that sometimes it creates a conflict in the person, okay? Um, you were born to be a certain way, and you find yourself in a reality where you're expected to be a certain way. And sometimes there's a conflict. It's an internal conflict between you and you. The part, there's a part of you that wants to be according to how you are expected to be. But there's also a part of you that sort of like doesn't want to be that way. And it's natural for that. Because there's a part of, there's a part of you that was born a certain way that wants to retain its identity. And you wanting to be, at least wanting to abide by what's expected of you, sometimes conflict with your reality, with your nature. And it creates a sense of despair. Sometimes you wonder whether you are unworthy, you know? And we're going to be talking about the concept of crime and, you know, crime and punishment in which we're going to sort of go back and try to understand the seeds of crime in society. Um, but, but this idea, I'm going to go come back to it. Because sometimes it, it, it creates a sense of vain, sense of sense of you know worthlessness in the person, and the person sometimes gets to a point where he or she becomes a, a monster because the person is just sort of tired to be how they expected him to be, and he is tired to sort of stop himself from being himself, and sometimes the worst of him becomes the best of him, right? 
and the, the person's savage nature, if you want to put it this way, sort of become the person's identity. And the person's like, okay, I, I don't care. I don't want to be the way they want me to be. I can't be the way they want me to be, but I have to be. And I'm not even going to try to suppress everything in me that's, that could hurt others. I'm not going to try to suppress everything in me that could be harmful to others. I'm just going to be as, as, as evil as I can because that's who I am. I was born that way. You know? And society, at the inception, was designed to create a balance in the person, right? To create a balance. Not to curtail the nature of the individual. Rather to help the individual understand that nature. That's what education is supposed to be. You're supposed to go to school to be enlightened about who you are. Understand your good and bad side, at least your, your realities in terms of a person. There are things in you that could be construed as good, but there are things in you that could also be construed as bad, depending on whom you're doing it to, or where you are this way or that way. So education was supposed to prepare you for that. So you are aware of yourself to the extent where you can self-censure or self-censor. Where you decide, hey, I'm not going to be this way. I cannot be that way. But society has gotten to a point where it is out of hand. And the more society modernizes, by the way, the, the worse it's going to get. Okay? The worse it is going to get until men exterminate one another. Because that's the end game here. Because you will never quell. You will never quench a human's nature. Nature will always come back because it is natural. They don't have to teach you to be a rebel. People have always rebelled. Why do you think there's been wars in this world forever? It's because people have always rebelled. I didn't have to learn to be a rebel from past warriors. It's in my nature. You try to put me in a vase, you try to put me in a box, I am going to rebel sooner or later. So you cannot quell human beings. And those who think they can are lying to themselves. Somehow they believe they could put somebody in a box. Yes, you could put somebody in a box temporarily. Again, I gave you the example of the COVID-19. A lot of people willingly went, willingly accepted the, 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 the restrictions. They said, like, ah, that's a good thing for me. Really? Well, it's not a good thing for me. It's not. It's a good thing for you. Then you can restrict yourself, but it's not a good thing for me. I didn't like being told when to be, how to be, and what to be. You know, I didn't like it. And there, there are plenty of people who don't. And that is why, to this day, you see all these people that are opposed to those things. Now, if they approached it differently, you know, trying to put the person in a situation where the person understands the need to be this way or that way, it would have been easier. But the more they force you, they try to quell your nature, the more that nature comes back with a vengeance. You cannot put nature in a bottle. You cannot put nature in a vase. You cannot put nature in a box. It will always find a way out. Okay? So when we're talking about artificial duties, we're talking about duties that are based, that are designed to put you in a box, to put you in a, in a, in a vase somewhere so that you don't know who you are. You don't understand who your nature. You respond to what they want you to respond. In other words, you become a robot, you know, and there are plenty of those around. Like I said, if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably not one of them. Okay? You have to be able to understand this world for what it is. Not how others want you to see it. So when we are talking about philosophy, the capacity to see the world for what it is, that's what philosophy is. Philosophy is the capacity to think for yourself, to see the world for what it is. Look at the world, not with your eyes, but from your, from your soul. To feel the world, to see the world for what it is. That's what philosophy is. It's this idea that you understand who you are. You understand where you are. And you understand those around you, what it is they're about. Because they're about something. Sometimes it's not, it's not going to be in your interest. But you need to know who they are. You need to understand what they do, how they do, and why they do. Also to understand why they don't, how they don't, and the reason they don't do. X, Y, and Z. So those are important factors. And the only way for you to get to that point is to educate yourself. Is to philosophize. Is to become conscious of yourself. Because this world is filled with artificial duties. And many of which carry cruel penalties, you know, insane penalties. You could lose your life just for not being a certain way. The police became the vanguard of this understanding where, you know, the police could shoot you just for being you. Whether you, you have some mental problem going on, whether you're black, whether you're at the wrong place at the wrong time, just for being you, you could die. It's insane. That's the world you live in. And you have to be aware of it. And not, not to put yourself in situations where you could lose yourself, where you could lose your beingness. So when we're talking about 
artificial duties we're talking about duties that are designed specifically for you to be and the, the key aspect of those duties is that you have to consent to be this way and in some time that consent is irrelevant as long as or so long as you are in a particular milieu it is assumed that you agreed to be here therefore whatever happens to you in that environment are things that you somehow accepted agreed upon ahead of time and there's no recourse there's nothing you can do when that happens to you and this is the world you live in but these obligations at least these artificial duties require you to be aware to be unnoticed you know you shouldn't do this you know you should not do that or you know you must do this you know you must do that and the failure of you not to be this way or not to do this or that could result in some harsh sometimes stringent if not cruel punishment and you could even lose your being and that is why it's important that you understand your reality you understand the world in, you, in which you live okay and also you have to be able to mitigate your reality and not to allow yourself to become sort of desperate to the extent where you sort of started to harm yourself or harm others you know? and in the, in the book uh, the burden of life I talk about this and there are a couple of books that are about to come out in which I'm going to talk uh, about this concept of, of you know being able to see the world for what it is and not hurting yourself um, you know and not relying on, on, on notions that are, have absolutely nothing to do with your reality and, 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 and assume that things are supposed to be this way or that way and when they're not uh, you know um, you, you sort of lose control of who you are you have to always remain in control of yourself remain in control of who you are but you also have to remain in control of others and be willing to do what's necessary to save your skin you gotta preserve yourself you gotta preserve other people's life you have to live to see another day you have to survive you have to make it until the end of your natural life and this is what I call artificial duties.